What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to NBA Every Day, where I'm breaking down off seasons. Just talking about every NBA team for 30 days. Hopefully, maybe not, maybe 33, maybe 34. We already talked about the Kings. We talked about the Warriors. So if you missed those, be sure to watch it. Even if you're not a fan of those two teams, I, I, I try to do a good job of just making an entertaining video. So I would give it a chance if you haven't already. But now let's talk about my Chicago Bulls. You like Kenny, bro. This is the third Bulls video you can drop in a little over a week. We tired of hearing about the Bulls. I understand. This is a little bit different, though, because when we talked about the Lonzo Ball signing and we talked about the signing trade for DeMar DeRozan, that was my perspective as a fan on Cloud9, a, a, a biased fan that's just super excited that, Chicago, that the Chicago Bulls did anything, right? Those are spur of the moment, pure emotions. And now since we're a week away from that, two weeks away from that, I can look at it from a different scope, different perspective, and kind of, again, talk about the Bulls. Um, a lot of it is nitpicking. I mean, think about the first two episodes of the series so far. We nitpick, you know what I'm saying? That's part of the media. That's part of what we do as NBA fans is we nitpick things. And I would say that this Chicago Bulls offseason is very polarizing. Um, I know well-respected journalists and well-respected podcasters that hate what the Chicago Bulls did this offseason. And I know some other people that are well-respected that absolutely love what the Bulls did this offseason. And I am more leaning towards the love. I I'm going to keep keep it honest with you. But I can understand the perspective of the people that don't love what we did. One thing that is a consensus is that the Lonzo Ball signing was a W. Um, I have not seen a single person... That I that I listen to or why I mean people on Twitter are gonna say what they want, but I mean like somebody that's in the media say that the Lonzo Ball contract or the Lonzo Ball signing isn't good for the team. I honestly do believe that Lonzo Ball will fit the team uh, pretty solidly. Uh, and I've been getting a lot of mentions about people thinking that my or Bulls fans expectations about Lonzo Ball is so so great, and I don't think that's the case. I don't know many Bulls fans thinking that Lonzo Ball is about to blossom into a superstar player. If anything, he's a high-level role player, and we will take that from what the Bulls have come from. We haven't really had that many great role players in our, our recent history, so having a guy like him that can um, whip the ball around we going on the breaks and hit his three-point shots and play great team defense, those are the type of things we need, especially next to some of the guys that we have, so I think that was a W of a of a signing and I think most people agree with that what makes it polarizing is the DeMar DeRozan sign and trade um because for a few re different reasons first of all I've seen a lot of people ask who are the Bulls bidding against right DeMar DeRozan I guess according to advanced statistics when you look at contracts was worth about 16 million dollars a year and the Bulls gave him three years 85 million and they gave up a first round pick to a team that had little to no leverage. I understand that perspective. But I, I, I legitimately do believe that this is a play from our front office to think even bigger than DeMar DeRozan and himself. Um, I, we've seen this with the New York Knicks in the past year or so. There is value to these super big market teams, at least from a fan base perspective, to be competent. Because that competency could potentially put you in a situation to become a free agent destination. And guess what the Bulls did this offseason? This was not an offseason where free agent pool was amazing. The, the only superstar player we had in this pool was Kawhi Leonard. And we all knew he was going to resign. But if you're ranking the top five, top seven players on the free agency board this offseason, the Bulls signed two of them. And I think that is a good sign for Bulls fans for the future again the bulls even though they're a big market team their historic team thanks to michael jordan winning six championships in the 90s it still is not a free agent destination and me and the homies talk about this all the time there are a few different reasons why i think the bulls might not might not have been a free agent destination even in those heyday with the derrick rose and joe kim noah's when we were on our way to potentially win a championship why we couldn't snag lebron we couldn't snag Melo, we couldn't snag this player and we dealt with carlos boozer for four years Maybe it was more than that. And one of the reasons is the, the shadow of Michael Jordan. The shadow of Michael, Michael Jordan is huge for a superstar player. Because no matter what, it's just the truth. If the Bulls trade for a superstar, get a superstar, or, or develop a superstar, he is going to be compared to Michael Jordan as soon as he hits superstardom. Jordan got a six. And I don't think many people want that for, for themselves. There was only one player I can think about um, that was like, I'll take that. Jordan won six. I'm going to go to Chicago and do the same thing. It was Kobe. People forget that Kobe was this close to being traded to the Chicago Bulls, but it wasn't for Luol Dang. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to play with Luol, but the Lakers wanted Luol. Kobe was willing to come to Chicago. <laughs> Just what? A, 
a decade since Michael Jordan left and he was like, I want to match that. Kobe was a different breed. Kobe was a different breed. But, so I understand the superstar players not wanting to come to Chicago for that reason. And the other reason is that management ownership has been terrible for more than a decade now. Legitimately has been really, really bad. So that's why it's no surprise when the Bulls trade Window Carter and Window Carter starts to Photoshop all of his old pictures out of Bulls jerseys, that's why it's no surprise when Chandler Hutchison gets traded away and he makes a TikTok of him laughing at the Bulls. It's, it hasn't been great recently. But I think all of that is kind of coming around right now. So yes, I think I can honestly agree that the Bulls overpaid for DeMar DeRozan. But as a Bulls fan, I can tell you personally, I don't really care. Because if DeMar DeRose can come to Chicago and help bring any buzz to this city, it is a W. It legitimately is a W. I've been to a lot of Bulls games in the last four to five seasons as we've been on this rebuild thing. And, and though the, the fans pack out the house every single night, there's a different kind of energy when they're good. The last time the Bulls were good is when we made the eight seed. We went against the Boston Celtics and it was Rondo, Dwayne Wade, and... Jimmy Butler, that was a kind of a roster right there. But those first two games on the road, going into Boston, the city was buzzing. We need those type of things again. Now, DeMar DeRozan, Alice Caruso, Lonzo Ball, Tony Bradley should be good enough for the Bulls to make a playoff spot. It should be. But as much as we spent this offseason, there is no guarantee. And that's the thing that's a little bit scary. I saw somebody on Reddit, I'm pretty sure, that had an unpopular, unpopular opinion saying that the Chicago Bulls are just going to be another version of the Indiana Pacers. And I looked at that, and I was like, sure, I can understand where he is coming from. The Indiana Pacers are a team that's going to be in the playoff hunt every single season. Some years they might make it, some years they won't make it, but they always have a good roster of like quality NBA players, but never get the superstar player or never do the thing to get it over the hump. And I can understand that. But here's my big but here. The Bulls have this X factor. And it's this 19-year-old kid named Patrick Williams. I don't believe that Patrick Williams is going to be a star in his sophomore season. But... I believe that Patrick Williams will be a star eventually. So, hypothetically speaking, this is me thinking big picture, and these are the type of things I think about all the time when I think about my Chicago Bulls. Two years from now, DeMar DeRozan will be 35-ish years old. That will be the last year of Nick Vucevic. We don't know what's going on with Zach Levine, but hopefully get an extension. That core is going to be pretty old in comparison to some of the other teams in the league, but a Patrick Williams is the star that I think he could be he could be the glue that makes some things actually happen. But yeah, there's a bit of a, a little bit of fear when you think about us giving up a, such a future pick for DeMar DeRozan when in reality, um, DeMar DeRozan might not be as good when that pick conveys. But I do believe DeMar DeRozan is one of those players that might age pretty solidly. It's not like he's going out there and he, he's hyper athletic anymore. I know he can still catch a body or, or two, but he is a slow paced kind of mid range killer. And those type of things won't go away. How good can the Chicago Bulls be? Honestly, I think our ceiling is more like a four seed. And I think our floor is like an eight seed. Um, I hope that we don't hit the floor. I would much, much more likely hit the ceiling. I don't want the Bulls to be in the play-in because if we did all of this just to be, what, two seats higher, three seats higher, uh, I would hate that so much. Um, we do have our pick this year. We have our pick in two years. So it's not all lost on the draft capital, but we did trade some future picks. I'm super excited to see what happens with Zach Levine. And I'm not talking about on his contract things, but more on his ability to adapt to being around better players. Um, Zach Levine is the oldest player in the league to never make an, um, a playoff appearance. And I want that to end, man. Um, Devin Booker was the last empty stats guy to, to change the narrative around him. him. And uh, Zach Levine has that same opportunity this offseason or this regular season because this is by far, and I mean, it's not even close. This is the best roster Zach Levine has ever played with. Um, I think offensively, the Chicago Bulls should be a top seven offense in the league. Um, I, I think that Billy Donovan is good enough to facilitate a good offense. I do worry about the defensive side of the ball. With DeMar DeRozan with our, being a, a negative defensive player pretty much for his entire career, Nick Vucevic being a pretty negative um, center, 
and, and Zach Levine still growing as a defender. I, I watched I watched the Olympics. I see him trying to lock in, and I think we need a lot of that this season. We do have a lot of holes on the defensive side of the ball. Even Lonzo Ball, who we signed to be a great defender, is not an amazing one-on-one -on -one defender. He's more of a great help team defender. Um, so, Alice Caruso, you better be ready to guard Kyrie four games this, series, this season and a potential playoff series too. I don't think the Bulls are done because the Larry Marketing thing, we don't know what the hell is going on with Larry Marketing. So, Bulls fans, before we wrap up this video, this is my question to you. What do you see the ceiling of the Chicago Bulls as and what do you see the floor of the Chicago Bulls as? I will be looking through that comment section. Thank you so much for watching NBA Every Day. I know this one was way more all over the place than any of the other episodes. I don't have a script.